In this video, we're going to show you how we took and replaced this old table, this cooktop table, and upgraded to a maple counter. And then also our dinette table, how we also replaced that. So let's go ahead and show you what we did. And let's check out the maple table next. Hey, I was just talking about the stovetop. Can you tell them a little bit about the table? Oh, yeah. So you mean the stovetop out there? The yeah, garden? yeah. I know that's like the coolest thing ever. Um, and so is this. So uh, in today's video, you're going to see how we gave this table new life. Um, it was not very pretty. And now it is absolutely gorgeous. And it was just a little bit of hard work, a little bit of elbow grease, um, and some spray paint. And um, so we're excited to take you along so you can see how you too could give your camper new life with just a little tiny upgrade like this. So let's go. Here I'm grabbing the maple plywood with the grab a suction cup tool, which can lift up to 376 pounds. It's absolutely incredible. Great for any smooth surfaces, and it just really takes the awkward out of awkward. Hey guys, glad you joined us. Uh, today's project is we are going to upgrade the tabletop of the table that goes into our 1999 Coleman pop-up. Um, it's the Utah. So um, if anyone out there has one similar, maybe you could do this upgrade yourself as well. Um, we decided to go with a three quarter inch maple plywood. Um, we really liked the way the grain looked on this and we um, have talked about maybe oiling it or doing something to enhance that after the fact. So uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to be doing the cuts and then maybe some disassembly of this table and uh, I guess the assembly. So. Come along. I can't. Okay, guys. So we finished cutting the plywood, um, and you may have noticed that we put some blue masking tape on the uh, top surface, and that was to minimize any splintering. Um, we just really didn't want to wreck that plywood because it's so beautiful. Um, so the next step is I'm just going to be taking off the hardware from the old tabletop um, and it's really awesome because I get to use the impact drill thing and this is like Mark hides this from me and it's like my favorite thing because it's perfect for my little hands. Anyway let's get started. Oh, you might want to use a little magnet tray to hold your stuff because it just keeps you from losing it and having it roll down the driveway. Yeah. Okay, so we got all the hardware out, but then we realized that, I guess in manufacturing, they use some type of a double face adhesive or tape to, I guess, attach them before they put the hardware in. So you're going to need to have a little hammer and some type of a pry we just use it looks like a putty knife and you're just going to be tap tap tapping to loosen them um, and while i'm on the subject uh, the size of the table is 28 and 3 quarter by 39 inches so that you'll know that when you uh, go to cut out your piece we will also put all of that down in the description in case you don't remember We have the stove which is in typically an outdoor stove that's what this is and as you can see it's just completely uh, falling apart and we are going to do the same thing with the piece of wood that we cut that was left over from that first slice that we did and so what I'm gonna start off with doing here for the outdoor stove is basically start pulling all the hardware apart and getting this uh, disassembled Now one thing to note, when you're disassembling anything or taking something apart, it's always smart. If you have some Ziploc bags, you want to, if the hardware is completely different from one to the other, you want to make sure that you basically just get a Sharpie, Ziploc bags, lunch uh, sandwich bags, 
put everything in the bags and just label what you know the name to be. You can make up the name, doesn't really matter, but just a little quick advice to help save some time when you go to put everything back together. A few other things to point out besides the Ziplocs that I just wanted to bring to mind is if you happen to have some of the plastic containers, eraser marker, or if you happen to have any of the pencils with the paper that you unwrap, the Chinese markers, I really like those a lot. You could use a Sharpie to make notes on your container also, but you want to maybe use some WD-40 when you're done with the project to wipe it all off. But the eraser, markets, eraser marker is good. I love the Chinese markers. Of course, they're Chinese pencils. I can't find any of them right now. Uh, just a little thing on the containers. And then also, just getting back to the reason that, you know, we really want to replace these is, uh, you know, this, this chipboard. The problem with the chipboard is that, you know, once it kind of gets, you know, wet or saturated, it's just, it's like a big sponge. This stuff's just junk. I don't know why they would build it. But, you know, we're going to do a little bit of a weight comparison also so you can find out what that is. The last thing with the stove, when you're taking the, your outdoor stove apart, if you are going to replace this, you have your side flap screws here. So you just basically want to go ahead and unscrew those and that'll allow you to take off your top cover, which should, in theory, allow me to access some more of the hardware that's underneath. So once you get those out, yes. So I have the rest of the screws here, which will allow me to take those out. And you can see they just have the uh, lockdowns here on the side. So get the rest of those out and then I can continue to determine what my actual measurements are. Right now it looks as though this is 16 by 22 and an eighth is what I've marked out. But when I remove this, I'll really be able to get a little bit better uh, measurements to be exact from what I have to work with. All right. So the next step in our project is to use the jigsaw to round out the corners on our table and on our stove top. Now this is the stove that goes outside the camper. Uh, we are redoing the wood on that as well. Um, and some of the things we thought it'd be important to note is that you know there are different blades that you can use to do all of these applications. For example, cutting the actual plywood and then also doing your corners. Um, we happen to choose the ultra finish blade. Um, it's really helpful if you're not super familiar with this kind of stuff to just look at what the blade recommends and kind of make your choice that way. We found that very helpful, um, or at least I found that very helpful. Uh, Mark has a lot more experience with this stuff than I do. Uh, the same thing with our blades for our jigsaw. Um, there were two that we could have used and um, it was the curve and the smooth. And what we did was because we weren't sure exactly which one would be the right um, one for the application, we actually, when I say we, I mean Mark, actually did a test. So we just used a piece of scrap wood and we used it on both corners and we decided that the smooth was definitely the better way to go. Um, so don't be afraid to do a test. It could really save you a lot of headache. And the other really cool tool that I'm going to talk about super fast is the, um, the Del Monte Red Grapefruit Lid. It was the perfect shape to do our corners. And these are super inexpensive. We can put the link in the description below um, if you think it would be helpful. So here we go. We're going to cut some corners.
Okay, so next up, I'm going to be working on the stovetop. And what I need to do is cut out this section here. Uh, before I do the cutout, I'm going to actually drill these holes, which I've actually started. Now, a couple things that I'm doing, I'm trying to work off of this, but you can see how shot this is. So I'll try to draw a little sketch with measurements as to what I believe uh, this should be and what we came up with so that um, anyone trying to build one of these from scratch, if they have this problem, will have something to work from. So I went with the half inch drill bit, which I'm going to use here, which really gives you a nice clean hole. And uh, before I do that, what I like to do is just do a center punch. So basically I'll punch this first with the center punch just to get a starting mark. And then I'll drill and then I'll actually flip it. And then once this gets to the other end, I can actually uh, drill from the other side. And the nice thing is it doesn't cause the uh, maple top to blow out with uh, like a traditional drill bit. So let me go ahead and start and so you can see what I'm going to do here. Next thing I've done is actually I'm going to be drilling and I've already started drilling my corners here. You can see the original one was rounded out. And the benefit of that is when you put your jigsaw in, it's going to give you a starting point. You could actually work off of these, but doing your corners also with the same bit is going to make things a little quicker. So what I've done already, same thing, pretty much have all three holes here started on my corners. So then I can just do my straight runs with my cuts. And remember, you know, this inside's covered up a lot. So most people aren't really going to see, I mean, you're not going to really see a lot of this surface. So, um, you know, you can make marks on it and um, pretty much just go to town. So this is a great, pro there's a lot of stuff to it, but a great project to take on. So let's get started. This honey cap makes a great template for you doing your corners. So if you have any kind of caps, you know, you need to do some tracing, just uh, look around the house, see what you can find. For our process of sealing, we did three coats of water-based shellac. Through each process, we had sanding in between each one. And then the final coat was a floor polyurethane. Now we're using a like sponge set up here. Teresa is applying it, which makes it really smooth for the shellac, with just a paper plate so you can throw it away. Now, I saw this on another YouTube channel, and I'm going to include that link not to get into the whole process of how this is done, but it was a great method. It really worked out well for us, and uh, we learned a lot. It's very time-consuming, but totally worth it in the end. Wow, it's so pretty. Look how the, um, the green is coming up. It's so pretty.
the aluminum trim sits an inch and three eighths from the end. Next, I want to take the double sided 3M and put it on the inside of this, which will help also protect the metal from the wood, but also allow it to stick on there while I then go ahead and set the screws. Now, when you did the disassembly, you should have the short screws and the long screws. The short screws sit on the top and the long screws go in from the side. Next, I hit all the holes with the center punch to leave a mark. So I can then go in and pre-drill to reduce the possibility of the screw stripping out or causing the wood to crack. Now, while we've been showing you how to replace the original cooktop with the maple cooktop, you could actually do the same process with just doing a straight table, just taking a sheet of plywood, rounding out the corners, and then that'll allow you to put any kind of uh, cooktop or have an outside table to do any kind of food prep. So this, uh, this cooktop does not have to go back in its original setup. If you have one, you can... Uh, easily modify it and come up with something totally different. I've applied the 3M tape to the hinges. By setting everything on with just the tape allows me to do a double check to make sure everything's in the right position and it opens correctly and operates the way it should before I actually go ahead and physically drill the holes and get everything permanently set. Teresa has painted the legs with the Hammerite silver paint to give them a new look. Here I'm actually reapplying the pin to hold the hinge for the legs. So I'm putting the cap back on and just using the hammer to tap that back on there so it's tightly fit. We're also able to find some nice rubber grommets for the foot legs and I'll include those in the description below. We found those that are local home improvement store. Now I'm reassembling everything on the old table so I have accurate measurements before I do any drilling on the new table. I then take my putty knife and clean off the old tape from the original hinge and Therese is going to reapply new 3M tape to this before we put everything back on the new table. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna. Hey, yeah, give me a break. All right, so this isn't gonna be so easy. All right, so I'm gonna do this one. Now it doesn't look like it's lining up, like it's lining up over there, but not it's over getting, here. It's getting it, close. Okay. Set. Yeah. Don't worry about holding it down. You should just pull it. Oh, okay. On the back. How's it looking? Looks good. Looks good. Yay. You do this one? You do that one. We're already over there. Okay. Oh, unless this is the harder part. Maybe that's which is harder. I don't know. Thank you. 
handle look. It looks good, man. Is it pulled in? No, don't yeah, you? We, yeah, we have to test it before but, we put screws in. But what if the it comes on sticky? Don't worry, we'll deal with that another time. Let me push it this way. Karate chop it. Karate chop it. Karate chop it. Okay. So next, you hit your holes. You can get these corner ones in. Um, I've never done this. What Just do I do? Push Just it push it down. Yep. Hold on. Just push. Yep. Yep, just do them all. Don't panic. I'm going to straighten it once I get this in a little further. This is where I skip and put the thing through my finger. Fun and games so you put a screw through your finger. Not fun then, it's just game. to start talking now okay hi uh so mark wanted me to talk hey Teresa. hi guys uh so mark asked me to just give a quick little talk about this beautiful table uh that wasn't so beautiful about a year ago <laughs> um what we did was we replaced it with a beautiful maple top um and we have a video. La, 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 la. Do a couple me, me, me's. Me, 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 me. And one or two fa la la la's. Fa la 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 la. Remember, be sure to set that out off this camping. We look forward to seeing you out there. Take care.